G'day guys, M10 Tam here. Today we're going to do a quick tip based uh, tutorial on when you're doing architectural um, renders and modeling. Um, I've learned this just from looking around the house and uh, seen um, real life renders, um, not real life renders, I'm um, seeing images and looking at renders that are really, really high quality, the ones that are really uh, given the props and rewards. And they always have edge skirting. Um, edge skirting is the stuff you have on the walls uh, that you connect with the floor and most people tend to forget about this and there is wall skirting, uh, door frame skirting and then there's the uh, window frame skirting. Um, seeing these small details can really help your scenes and renders so here's a quick little uh, cube wall I'm just going to add I'm using Blender, but this applies pretty much for any modeling based uh, program you have. So we're going to extrude this, extrude that. And we're going to have a small one here. Oh. Small one here. Do it one more time. So something along the lines of that. That's like a low poly example. A real high quality example would look more or less like this. So we want to get rid of this, make it a lot more round. So something a lot more smooth, I guess, or something's more, I guess, detailed to an extent. So something along the lines of this, a scene that's being connected with your floor can add a lot more detail to your renders and scenes. And this isn't this isn't just for roofs, but also uh, for ceilings. I mean, and this is not only for floors, but also for roofs. Uh, for roofs, I usually go with this uh, type of design. So I usually go for this sort of design. You can do it really more high poly or low poly. This is just for a tutorial sake. So this is starting to look a lot more like it. And let's just add a ground. Uh, next would be a door frame. So for the door frame, how would that look? So here, let's just say that this is our room and we're going to make a door frame here about yay high. About there, that would look good. So if you're door skirting, we're going to Add one that uh, connects the wall, so it, it pretty much hugs the wall, it hugs the... So we are going to hug around here. We're going to hug around here. Yeah, that looks cool. And on top of this, we're also going to add another one. So here. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to add another intersection here. I'm going to hug it. Uh, like so. And bring up this one. And we're also going to disconnect that and change the texture to
So here we have a skirting on the door, we have a skirting on the floor and windows, and these are the shapes that usually take place. Now you can do a lot more better design than this one, I'm sure you can look up many examples of door frames or door skirtings, uh, but, this, but this is the uh, general idea and just for the uh, for what you should be keeping an eye on when doing your interior designs. And this uh, method also applies for um, the door. Uh, I have a render that I made quite some time ago that I can show you. So here is a really, really old, not really old, 2014 of my previous room that I was living in. Um, and as you can see, the window has very, has multiple um, levels of skirting for it and it's a really really detailed, this one was a lot more detailed approach as you can see here along with the uh, buckle, not buckle, the uh, window stopper and it gives us, it gives it a lot more depth, it gives it a lot more feel to it um, as you can see and really gives off the final finishing polishes to your scene. It makes it a lot more realistic. There's, it gets rid of any sharp shapes and um, any 100% sharp shapes and gives it a lot more rounded and finished feeling. I should probably get back into this, but um, this is when I had a lot more time on my hands. A lot more indeed. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and hopefully you can apply this to your work and I'll see you next time.